if you are not experts in XML, if you know something about XML, and hopefully there will be a bit of message. And if you don't know XML, I hope there will be some serious message for you. So, what is XML? It stands for extended markup language. And uh, basically, it's a syntax for trees. It really is. And it seems a bit pathetic that why should one make a fuss about syntax for trees? I mean, trees have been around. And, uh, you know, when you learn any computer science at all, in the beginning you learn about trees and trees, you know, processing trees, doing things, parsing. And everywhere you come across trees, so why fuss about uh, trees? Now, I would say that, uh, well, there is one reason, so one could suspect that after all, you know, there are these guys who, are, who know a lot about uh, processing trees, and this is what they can do, so they're making fuss about it. So that suspicion is well founded, but actually it's not true. And what I'd like to convince you that actually there's more to it. So we are, what, what we want to talk about is really tree shaped data. We have gotten used uh, to thinking of data as tables. Okay. I mean, uh, Dr. Mohan was referring to RDBMS as an innovation that came out of IBM and so on. And now it's almost like currency. I mean, you think of data only as tables. And we forget that uh, before RDBMS, we didn't think of data as tables. We were thinking of you know, all kinds of index file structures, all kinds of nonsense. But thinking of tables, data as tables, completely streamlined a whole lot of stuff that we could do with data. The fundamental idea here is that that's not good enough. We want to move to data not as tables but as trees. And the kind of flexibility it gives, thinking about tree shaped data, the argument is that in particular you can look at semi structured data. We'll introduce XML through some examples and hopefully convince you that uh, this way of thinking about it is good. Idea of moving from structured data to semi-structured data is that you get tremendous extensibility. And in the kind of applications we've talked about, uh, you can do programming with data in a way that you couldn't do before. This is like the core uh, dogma. There, is this, there are two views of uh, processing. And this is a philosophical point, but I think important. One is that you think of uh, programs as information processing. Right? Software is got programs some input stream comes and you produce an output stream. You take information, process it and you can think of it this way. Or you can think of it as there is this data hanging around and programs are little objects that go over data, sit in some place, modify something, navigate to another place, modify something. These two are completely different views of the same thing. One where the program is sitting there and data flows through it. Another is where data is all around the place and the program navigates data. In some sense, what we are talking about is this shift. This shift here is basically, you want to somehow consider data as primary. And, and you don't want to think too much about the shape of data. Everything you always will think of it as some trees in a way by which structure can be inferred as you go along. The, so structure of data is not supposed to be something God-given, fixed. This is for a database person that's important. I'm not a database person, but I'm just saying that we are used to thinking of schemas Schemas, once and for all, describe how data is going to come for you. You sit here and wait for the data to come in a particular form. You process it, you validate it, send out. And you sit there waiting for queries to emerge. And when queries are asked, you navigate it. And this is it. I would say the table base. Here what one is saying that, no, no, no. I'm not going to assume that data is given in some prefixed form. Schema is all given to you. but the jargon that people use, which I don't quite believe in, but at least as a good, uh, as a good uh, buzzword, what you want is self-describing data. This is what people are looking for. Data somehow, as it comes along, also says, describes how its shape is. It describes its own structure. And now, HTML is really, you know, you think about it, how documents before HTML and documents after HTML. And you can see why people are dreaming of self-describing data. It makes a lot of sense, actually. Earlier, you know, 
Today you can actually set set up a HTML document in which you, you know, you don't think too much about mixing images, mixing this, that, and, you know, using HTML tags, you, as you go, go along, you are able to say, you know, what particular kind of data is there, what is the structure there is, so in some dynamic fashion. That's really what you sort of, that's what you want to do. HTML to XML is basically taking this idea to something as far as you can get. So, let's start off with this. So XML is an extended markup language, which is a syntax for trees. As I said, merely that's really all that is in whatever final jargon you see. So the big question is why the fuss about it? And the claim is that the way so this is also important. The way you were taught about trees in uh, data structure code, uh, whereas is uh, you know, these are uh, basically something recursive data structure you do using pointers and so on. Now, these are very hard objects to manipulate. And uh, what one is saying is that XML, the idea is that trees are completely described using declarative form, in a declarative form. And the claim is that these techniques are very important. And the kind of new problems that come when you start looking at trees this way is a subject. And that has uh, quite uh, important applications for both theory and practice. So what is the main problem? The main problem is to construct tree-shaped data, explore such data, mine such data. And you want to do it in as general a form as possible. And so you so remember the data is going to come in, probably not resident, it's going to come on the fly, and somehow you want to see it as trees constructed, manipulated. This is the central problem. So you the contrast is basically with conventional relational calculus concepts of database theory with more procedural notions for tree. On one hand, you've got relational databases and uh, the view of relational databases that you've got, uh, you know, called the relational calculus, right? Joins and unions and how you describe the data, as opposed to how you would do for trees. In trees, they have, you have more procedural notions, right? Insert something, append something, look at a subtree, navigate, find such node, you know, so you're talking about, this is really the contrast that you're And the analogy that, as far as what this talk is talking about, is pretty much the way you have got query algebra. You know, think of SQL kind of stuff that you've got for relational databases. The role that is played correspondingly here are automata. Automata, in the case of XML, pre-shaped data, play pretty much the same role as your query algebra do. And uh, so this is really what this tutorial uh, tries to explain. And logic and automata play a very critical role. And uh, many, many research questions come out of this. So the, these things are supposed to be self-describing data. Uh, there is a lot of hype about it. Most of the, really all that it means is only means that XML trees are labeled or tagged. And so these are all tags that are not predefined. You can define on the fly as you go along. That's that's what is self-describing about it. So XML, you have trees, and the nodes are tags, and these tags are not God given. Okay, you can define your own tags and thereby define your own structure. And uh, the, this tagging is very essential to XML applications. So it is very important because you know the applications that you build on can actually process, look at the data, I mean look at the tags, see the kind of structure that you have got, infer it, and apply it in another one. So this is the kind of uh, applications that you have built. And the representation of irregular data becomes much simpler, unlike in the tabular view of data. In the case of relational databases, if you've got some unstructured data, converting it into a normal form and representing it as a colossal pain. Okay. So here, all that can be, this sort of stuff can be done naturally and easily. And uh, so here, for instance, if you have a tag called book, and you've got a subtree, subtree structure saying author and title, then the subtree is what you look for, and you can insert it in various places. So the moment you have defined it in a place like that, this is like an implicit schema definition that works in various contexts. This is the key idea in this code. And of course, you can see that that gives a lot of flexibility, but uh, makes it very painful in some ways to reason about and to establish properties of. And schema languages here define the set of all possible structures.